Good morning. Welcome to the Jim and Sam Show. That's me trying to be energetic. It worked. Hope everyone had a nice MLK day yesterday. Um, I always forget that we're off. You know, every year, like Travis will send a reminder and go, hey, you guys were off on Monday. And I'm really happy he did because every year I'd show up and forget that we were off. I would have been so disappointed if I found out that you had woken up early and logged into Zoom thinking that we were on. Well, I did wake up early. It was one of those uh, where I woke up at 5.40 a.m. and just couldn't get back to sleep. for no. Like, I laid in bed probably for almost 10, trying just to enjoy the extra couple hours. And I just I just laid there like a lump of shit. So, it, it, it worked. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, categorize you as a lump of shit. <laughs> oh, I would. Just laying there in bed like a lump. Not, <laughs> not, not, not sleeping. Like somebody had just squatted over the bed and left you there. Yeah, Amber Heard. I'm Amber Heard's gift to Johnny Depp. <laughs> you know, before we even start, what, one thing I want to recommend. I'm not finished with it yet. Okay. But you know how like we, we talk about these serial killer specials and how they can be... I know exactly what you're going to say. Too, mu too annoying and they, and they harp too much on the, the, the evil killer. The Night Stalker on Netflix... Is I, I was like not gonna watch it because I'm so sick of serial killer shit. I'm like, oh, we get it, you're the Antichrist. But I decided to try it, and um, it really concentrates on the cops and the investigation and the victims. Now I'm sure they're gonna get to Richard Ramirez at one point, but they really do not spend a lot of time on him at all, other than talking about the crimes and talking about uh, you know what happened in relation to the victims. It's really good. It's one of the better ones I've seen, and they don't they don't harp in an annoying way on the on the killer. You know, I'm just so sick of the killer. Um, so again, I've gone through like I think four of them, or I'm on the fourth one now, and it's really great, very very interesting. They interview the two lead detectives, are kind of the stars of it. Um, you know, and you see how many mistakes the LAPD made. These were like the sheriff's office, I think, was doing most of the investigation. But just watching it, when you see opportunities to catch this person that were bungled by police um, things things that they could have done but didn't do it just because of interdepartmental politics you know like uh, every job has that shit um, not getting the fingerprints out of the you know, all this nonsense really great I so I recommend it highly to anybody who likes um, it's not annoyingly glorifying of that of Richard Ramirez who is even a bigger scumbag than I remembered yeah I felt that exact exact same way i wasn't gonna watch it because like i mean i thought the ted bundy stuff put it over the top like it was like yeah. the, the the ted bundy stuff and then the zach efron movie came out and i was like all right with the serial killers they're so they're like real life super villains Ooh, yeah. they're so mysterious Ooh, watch out but i was a hundred percent with you i gave it like a couple of minutes like while i was doing the dishes just to see if this was any different and when I saw that it was, especially the first, I don't know, three or four episodes, like it's almost completely police officers. It's 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 a, the story of the investigation. It's not the story of the crime, which I was like, okay, that's great. And you get to see what goes into the investigation and why it takes so long. And like you said, the, the interdepartmental stuff, like they were talking about Los Angeles and... They're going crazy, and everybody's in such fear because they've never had a, a, a serial killer like this that just targets everybody. There's no yeah. ethnicity. There's no age. There's no gender. There's no nothing. It's just completely random going into houses. But they were talking about how many different police operations there were in Los Angeles County and how he was going throughout the whole county. And, the, you know, all the cops are like these alpha male detectives the want to solve it and so they're not sharing information with another department in another area because they want to be the ones to solve it right and you end up with these huge communication gaps did you get to the episode where he goes to san francisco yep i i just i i just watched i don't think i finished with that when i was watching it last night um uh, diane feinstein just I, yeah, I don't know if it was uh, her fault or, or, or not, or maybe she was. She might not have been told properly what not to say. 
But yeah, you, you, you realize how, how much information they keep privately too, just so they kind of, you know, if they have something that's helping them follow the asshole doing this, the last thing they need is someone blathering, and the police have this evidence, you know. <laughs> so, you know, of, of course, just, just for the press conference. But they haven't mentioned his name once. Everyone knows who he is, and it was Richard Ramirez. I mean, they, they mentioned Richard Mena because I think that was the name he put on a dental, in a dentist's dentist office. office yeah. as, as evidence, they mentioned it, but they have not mentioned his name once. And I don't think they're trying to necessarily be mysterious. They're kind of walking you through it as they went through it. And I, I like that they're not harping. I mean, yeah, they have to talk about him at one point because he is the guy. And you're right. He didn't tell you. It, it was old, young, um, just no He targeted doors. If you had a fucking sliding door or a window, yeah. that was kind of that was what his mo was. He would come in through an opening. Yeah, he uh, he yeah. They just keep calling him the suspect, which I like the same way you yep. do. Like it because With it's also killer, yeah. yeah, it's like cop language. They're talking about him the way they talked about him. They didn't know his name. They didn't know who he was. It's not like they were walking around the police station going, "Have you found the night stalker?" Yeah. Those are names that the media. You know, sells newspapers with those aren't names that the cops are 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 necessarily using until it becomes so commonplace. But yeah, aren't they I, hateable I too? To, by the way, sorry, sorry uh, aren't they hateable? The media, uh, like they're they're hateable all all the time. They're, but there's one reporter who I guess was big on covering it. And look, they have a job to do. I don't blame the press for trying to get out there and get the scoop. But she had found out about the it was an Avia shoe that Ramirez wore. And was leaving prints everywhere, so the cops could tie the crimes together by this via shoe print. And they're a very rare shoe, and I think there's only like one mm -hmm. in that color sold in Southern California at the, in that time. It made me want to get a couple pairs. It really did. They were kind of nice. They're Let's obviously good for ice. getting around. Yeah, and then you're not going to wake anyone in the house. Uh, you know, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> want to be quiet at home. <laughs> all terrain, all terrain <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yeah, good for scaling walls. You through windows. <laughs> so. Uh, this reporter, you know, some detective uh, told her, and so she was going to run with the story. And uh, the cops said, look, you, you, you're going to hurt us if you do that. So she got the captain. He got the captain to promise her an interview with the two lead detectives, but she would leave that evidence out. So she got her interview with the two lead detectives, and she left the shoe evidence out. That, that I don't mind. Like, that's kind of like, hey, I got a job Man. to do. Give me something. I won't go with what, I, what will be a great story. I won't do it. But you got to give me an interview. But just the fact that sometimes they don't they don't care that the information they're giving out is actually going to help a guy continue to bludgeon people with a hammer. Like, they didn't give yeah. a shit about that. It was like, well, if you give me this, I won't run with that, even though running with that will cause him to change that and make him harder to catch. And it's just like, but it's just those little things that like you realize how important that stuff is because that piece of evidence is the piece of evidence that ends up, well, yeah, whatever. Like... That's that. That's such an important piece of evidence because it's the one thing that he didn't realize he was leaving behind. Right. And that was the one thing that they were like, if we catch this guy and he's wearing those shoes, we can immediately bring him in. And we don't have to bring him in on a parking ticket or whatever we get him on. We can immediately tie him to every right. crime that we have him on. And you're like watching this. Like the lead detective the guy with the mustache is great in the thing just like gill going over everything uh yeah like the the with well, the hispanic roland guy. he's basically roland yeah he looks like roland with a mustache <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hammer roland with like yeah with like a few extra doses of testosterone <laughs> yeah if roland was a male <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but you're just like this guy is is so obsessed with the case like he's working 18 hours a day and I, I, I forgot how long the Ramirez case lasted when they're like on day 165 of trying to case, chase this guy down. And he's going through like, I mean, 10 houses in a week or something like that. Like it was it was crazy. The numbers he was racking up and how much they were trying to get him. But like this dude's yeah. family is falling apart. He's paranoid about everything. He's not sleeping. And you're literally watching a guy's life fall apart. But it's all contingent on the fact that, well, we have this shoe. We have this shoe. And then they're like, we have one single fingerprint. And I like you have to have so much appreciation for that era of policing, too, yeah. or, or detective work, too. Because, like, they talk about they found they finally found, like, one fingerprint that they thought they could use. But they didn't have a fingerprint computer system in place yet. So they have to wait. 
and just hold on to the print until they can get some kind of a name associated with it. Then once they get a name, they can go through the, the fingerprint archives, and then they have to literally physically take the cards out that have the prints on it, and an expert analysis guy has to sit there and look and 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 analyze the microscope, yeah. two prints next to each other to figure out if they're matching or not. And it's just like, man, it was a lot of work. It is crazy. They would look. It was. I feel I mean, like a, a magnifying glass. They would look at, and that's all those yeah. old cop movies. I always think of Serpico when I see that, because I remember yeah. in Serpico, Pacino was doing that. I'm like, what a fucking. And now there's these just data banks and computers, and it's such, and with DNA, uh, it's so much of a faster. Because I'm, I'm only at the part right now where he attacked the couple in San Francisco, but then afterwards he was such a nut. He made himself mm -hmm. like a. He would eat something in the kitchen. He uh he jerked off on the fucking on the carpet like, yeah. and, and now that DNA would be so much easier. But back then, I think it was just blood or your blood type, type A. Type. So you know now it's just so much easier to throw something to a computer. That's why I love when they yeah. arrest people, and they take a little DNA. Like I don't give a fuck. You can have my DNA. Like not enough to splash in a crime scene and set me up, but enough where you can put it in a database. So if there's a fucking a body found with blood on it, they can get the DNA and match it. I mean, yeah. Well, OJ thinks a lot that's of how like they got him. OJ thinks that's how they got him. That they uh, framed him with the you know DNA was such a new science. That's actually how they got that jury because DNA was so new. It was the first time a lot of yeah. people had even heard of DNA being used as evidence. Like now, the minute you say, "Well, we have DNA matching him," a jury's going to be like, "Oh, well, there's DNA. That's science. Like that's, right. there's no getting around that." But back then in 95 or 94, whenever the OJ thing was, the jury was like, I don't know about this DNA stuff. Sounds like it was planted to me. Yeah, well, the jury got, they, didn't, they weren't going to convict him anyway, um, They especially after Mark Furman. And they and yeah. Yeah, the, the prosecution handed it to him. They made him put the glove on, Dennis Fung. Yeah. Fucking li li he was literally like Gene Kelly in Dancing in the Rain through the crime scene. I mean, he was just fucking <laughs> traipsing, <laughs> fucking walking around with the blood, and Detective Van Adder had the fucking the blood, and he didn't go right home. Like, they just did so many things that probably weren't at all nefarious, but just were, that gave reason for another lawyer to go, hey, that's not procedure, you know. So yeah. it, it's kind of like if you want to break up with somebody, and you're not sure if they fucked another person, but yet you find a phone number in their pocket and they weren't where they said they were going to be. Like, there's enough reason to doubt it. There's enough reason plausible to Plausible deniability. It. Yeah, or, 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 yeah, or a plausible reason to or have, like, reverse. yeah, suspicion or, or doubt or something. So, um, but I, I'm not at that part yet. I, I just literally, he, he, the Feinstein just made her stupid reward offer and then the, um, Chief made a, uh, he said, look, that hurts our investigation a lot. Um, that's why I turned it off. I was just too tuckered out last night. I watched it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I got I to gotta pick and choose when I watch because I watch when my wife falls asleep on the couch because otherwise I'll be watching that stuff all the time and she'll, she thinks I have, she'll think I have problems. She doesn't like all that serial killer stuff. She doesn't like right. all the horror movie stuff. But then what inevitably ends up happening is she it gets even worse because... Like, she'll fall asleep on the couch, and literally every time she wakes up, there's, like, some, like, slasher thing on. Like, it's a, it's a, and she wakes up at the worst possible times. Like, it's a, it's a cop. It's like that scene, like, she, she wakes up from a nap, and she just hears, after killing the victims, he'd eaten half of a cantaloupe and masturbated on the rug. And she's like, what are you watching? I'm like, wait, it's from the cop's perspective. It's from the, yeah. it's from the cop's perspective. It's okay. Yeah, at least he is healthy. At least, he, at least he ate well. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they, yeah. at one point, uh, at one point, and we just got an article, that some viewers of Netflix is nice talking to think the series went too far. I'm not going to read it because I haven't finished watching it, even though I know what happens. I just, I like unfolding the investigation with the cops because I don't remember all the the, uh, the details. But they had, because he had notoriously bad teeth, disgusting teeth. So in Marvel. this car with fingerprints, they find, a, a, the prints are unusable because of the, uh, the, the, idiots at LAPD left the car in the sun in the evidence lot so they wind up finding this card for a dentist and they go to this dentist's office and uh, I think he knows who they're talking about for some reason and uh, because I guess there's a pent whatever whatever it is that the dentist knows yeah I know who this guy is um, and he goes yeah he was here five days ago like they had to wait months for this access to this car but they had missed them by five days so mm -hmm. um, 
they look at his x-rays and the dentist goes, but he'll be back. Or, or, or they sent it to a, another dentist who says, that guy will be back to the dentist because he has an impacted tooth and it's going to be killing him. So they uh, stake out two detectives at this dentist office. They're like, he's going to come back in. But some executive thinks they're wasting too much money. And he goes, ah, oh, you can't do that. So they call LAPD and they put in one of those burglar alarms where you, you hit the button if you're getting robbed and a silent alarm goes off. And they make them pull the cops. They pull the cops literally the next day he shows up at the dentist's office. And the detective said, I got a call that night from this dentist going, why didn't you guys come? I was pushing the button and pushing the button. So not only did they pull the two detectives off, the asshole who installed the alarm um, didn't hook it up right or there was a malfunction because this doctor is hitting the uh, silent alarm and it didn't work. So Richard Ramirez came in, got his tooth fixed, left. And that annoyed me so much because he probably killed eight people after that, maybe more. Uh, mm -hmm. All of these people who were bludgeoned to death that could have been uh, alive if they had just not pulled these two cops off that detail. Like that person so who made that decision should really understand that they are somehow responsible for the murder of these people. Like that, that I hope that person uh, never ever spun it in a way where they didn't realize that they are absolutely responsible for those people being dead. They should feel bad. And, they and feel bad, and yeah. They also, criminal. They also made it so that now this dentist has to awkwardly actually do dental work on this guy that even if he doesn't know all the details, he knows this guy's dangerous now. He knows this yeah. guy's dangerous enough that there were cops posted up in his dentist office for days. Like, I don't want to get in that guy's mouth. Yeah, no. Although Creepy. he's probably safe then. That is, you're right, but that's probably a safe time to to do it is when you are, uh, you know, when the guy's like, oh, oh, oh. When, you're, when you're cutting a guy's fucking impacted tooth open, he's probably on his best behavior. Didn't they like? Yeah, no, you're probably right. That's when he's. That's when he's actually. You, you've you've developed. He's developed a dependency on you in that moment. Yeah, yeah. He you wants know, you to fix you, it. You, yeah, he wants you on his side for sure. Uh, I'm reading this uh, article uh, that Yahoo posted, where some people uh, think the Night Stalker, the series, went too far. And it's no spoilers. Um, right. But this is dumb. Like, I, first of all, I don't even know how real this is. It's just another one of these articles where they go, some users and some right. viewers think, and then they post six tweets. And you're like, it's yeah. literally six people. Is this a thing, or did you just right. find some tweets? But they they think that uh, n that it went too far, and it's tabloid-esque because of the imagery. Not because of the way the story's told. They think because of the way, and you've seen that, the way they like linger on the... like. There's really graphic photos from the oh. crimes. Like The crime scene photos are in it. Yeah. But like to me... Well, yeah, that's a pretty difficult thing to see. I think it's so much more damaging, the stuff that annoys kind of both of us about a lot of these serial killer docs. Like, if you show no violent imagery, but instead portray these guys as, like, super villains or, like, a handsome strangler broke in. or I mean, like, on, on, on American Horror Story, you know, they dramatized... Richard Ramirez uh, on the last season, and it right. wasn't like a, it wasn't a true telling. It was a reimagining. It was almost like a Tarantino, sure. you know, uh, Hitler. Like you do with the Hulk, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But there were literally Richard Ramirez stands on Twitter because they got like this hot dude. You know, his teeth weren't all gnarly in the show, and so like I remember sitting there going, like, look at all these teenage girls like going crazy for Richard Ramirez because he was such a fox on that show. And I'm like, that's way worse than yeah. showing s photos from the actual crime scene and being like, this is a thing that actually happened. Meanwhile, Richard Ramirez had stained, disgusting teeth. He was missing teeth. He had a, a terrible odor. Stunk. Stunk. Yeah. The only, there is, there's nothing, the only thing about him that uh, was, was that he didn't kill, he, he was, he molested kids. He was a fucking pedophile too, but he didn't kill kids. That's the only people he didn't kill were children. He would abuse them and not, and, and he would always set them free or, uh, somewhere. Uh, for some reason, that was his, like, that was, even as awful as he is, that was the one line he didn't cross for himself, I guess, um, was that he wouldn't, uh, he, he wouldn't kill kids. But yeah, the, do, by the way, those photos like, you talk, those photo man, before the, I forget, those photos, right. I, I almost think that some of those are, like, they're, they're Ken Burnsing them, but some of them look like reenactments, like, almost like they've taken the crime scene photo and they have reenacted it to get better footage of it, but they're, like, almost showing you the difference, like, they, they'll pan in on the camera 
and you'll look like it's it's the crime scene, and all of a sudden it goes, poof, and then it goes to the actual photo. So you can see, like, we've modeled this after the... Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. They're giving you a feeling of what it's like, but it's actually a set that they're taking from the photo. They probably had uh, experts, you know, or, or set experts dress it up and look like the actual real crime scenes. Yeah, I think they did the... Uh, I think, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's... The, they do the reenactment, and then they show the actual photo from the yeah. crime scene. But there's real, like... I mean, you see the bludgeoning photos. And stuff. Oh, yeah. It's pretty gruesome. Terrible. It's pretty Terrible. grotesque. Terrible. Doesn't he come across, doesn't he sound like he's, he's a, a douche, too? Like when he's talking Hateable. about all this Satan stuff? Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, she goes, like, I swear to God, I won't tell anybody. He goes, swear to Satan. And it's like, yeah. what are you? It's in like high Chip. School? Like, fucking Chip Ramirez. <laughs> yeah. if, if he wasn't such a fucking <laughs> monster, but he has Chip's mentality. You know, it's just the whole yeah. fucking, fucking devil's cool. Just an asshole. Yeah. Pentagrams. Uh, I do this in the name of Satan. Okay, I'm sure. Whatever, dude. <laughs> like Satan. Yeah, it so really I'll is it just today. Like a, it's very good. A teenage poser yeah. metalhead kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but he but he was yeah. such a. It's interesting to hear the people who survived. Like the, yeah. you know, anyone who was a kid that it happened to d did survive it. And there's one um, one woman was on the couch. And she heard something loud, and she screamed her husband's name. And then she goes, and then I realized it wasn't him because it was silent. Like, she's like, Johnny! And it was silent. And then she's like, I mean, something is here, and it's not my husband. And it was really a tense moment in the documentary. And then they go to her husband, and then you realize he's a cop, and uh, mm -hmm. he had a gun. So he came out, and they... And, and, they they found Ramirez's finger footprints outside of her window. Like he had opened the window, and it was that was the sound she heard was the part of the window going up. But it was him. So so many people had near misses too. Um, yeah, like, was, you know, something happened, scared them away. It scared them away. There's a lot of close calls too. Yeah, there was a couple that he that said that he shot them both in the head. Both of them yeah. got bullets in the head, but both of them missed all the vital organs and the brain right. and everything like it lodged in one lady's neck but it didn't hit her like windpipe or anything like that right. and the other guy like it grazed through his ear and like he gets up and he starts chasing him so even richard ramirez is like oh what the fuck i just shot this guy in the head and he's running after me now i'm out of here and, and he ran out of the split. house yeah he's split yeah so uh, yeah, yeah i recommend a, that if anybody needs the, a couple dude, episodes of something to watch it's really good i feel terrible for the victim and the victim's family and everything, but there's the one story of the of the woman who like called either her parents or her grandparents or something like that, and she was like, "Look, like there's a serial killer out in Los Angeles. Like, you know, you need to start yeah. locking your doors." She's like, "I'm from the Midwest. I'm not going to live a life where I have to lock my door." And I'm like, "That's not locking your door is not asking too much." Yeah, I, I lock my door every every all the time. Just lock it. What do you like? what's the benefit to not having your door locked? Like, even if there isn't serial killers, do you just want people to be able to come over? Nobody should be yeah. able to get into my house without announcing themselves first. I look at my little... I get an alert. I get an alert whenever there's motion outside. An alert on my phone goes off. I can look out the window. Oh, do I want... And then announce yourself. Announce yourself before entering my compound. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you live in a great little old town, you didn't have to lock your what there's no mental illness in your fucking shit boring right? one store town. Like that guy in New York in uh in uh Harlem. He was in the subway, came in naked and was dancing and he throws the guy on the tracks and uh just a fucking mental patient. And the greatest was that there was a good Samaritan because this 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 naked kook throws the guy onto the tracks, uh and then this good Samaritan jumps down to rescue the guy and the naked yeah. guy starts fucking with him, and this was a, he was a big dude, and he fucking clocked this naked mental patient right onto the third rail. He punched him, and the guy fell onto the third rail, so problem solved. And I think the other guy lived, too. <laughs> but it was I've seen oh. footage of that from the other angle. There was someone running down, and you can actually see this big dude getting, uh, you know, knocking this guy out, uh, this, this fucking whack job. But so, again, you're leaving your doors open. Th there's plenty of fucking crazy people. There's a crazy naked guy in January, in the subway. What do you think? He's not going to walk through your, your house if your door's open because you, you live in a nice town? 
Stupid assholes, lock your doors. I, I, dude, I live I in a building never. with security, and I have a fucking camera at my front door. I have a camera, and I time. check locks every night. I got a camera. I got locks. I got an alarm. I got you are not getting in here. The world is going to know if you even attempt. I got floodlights. Oh, I got I got motion activated floodlights. They're the best. They are the best. I have so you watch people too. I mean, even like little things like people go, you know, even in 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 good neighborhoods, bad neighborhoods. There's you always hear stories about people going driveway to driveway, trying to open up cars, steal stuff. Yeah. But you watch them run away as soon as that floodlight comes on. Like of course, that. and and there's cameras everywhere now, which is great. Cause cameras, it does, it does awesome. catch people going away from scenes two blocks away. Like there are good things to that, but I have a thing where if someone breaks into my house, the alarm doesn't go off in the police station, but what it does is it sets it sends a signal. There's a company, and what they will do is if if they get the signal, they look up your address and they will well they will write a letter. Um, and the next morning they run out and throw it into the mailbox and they say there has been a disturbance and they will send it to a local <laughs> police uh, outlet. So three or four days later, you will have an officer open the letter and hopefully get around to you that week. That's good. I mean, and it probably yep. costs a little less, which is Much that less. way it's a, yeah. it's a good investment and, that's, <laughs> yeah. and you still get the message out there. <laughs> Save electricity, yeah. Right, right. Don't mess with me. Three to four days from now, there could be hell to pay. Yeah, that's right. There's a problem. <laughs> but, uh, dude, I'm paranoid. But again... Because it's not always going to be some crazy gang. It could just be someone passing through your nice town. It could be yeah. somebody passing through where you live. And if you're in a house, I don't blame people. I watch something on safe houses in L.A. And you can't blame people in L.A. After Manson and Richard Ramirez, you, you can't mm -hmm. blame Los Angeles residents for wanting to have a safe room in the house. But there's one guy, and he's got like the best safe room in L.A. He's got a safe house. And uh, when you walk in, if you burglarize... And obviously, a loud alarm goes off, and fog shoots out at you. I think he has it, like, but really thick, heavy fog where it disorients you. Um, and then I guess like strobe lights or whatever he does, he goes, it, it will send you out the door, and that's just at his front door. Uh, and he has a safe room that you'll you'll never get into. So yeah, I, I don't blame people who who have money and live in L.A. for having a nice safe room. I would love to have one if I had a house. Definitely, yeah. I'll tell you what. My perspective changed when I saw Donnie Wahlberg in The Sixth Sense. I don't want some crazy guy all skinny in his underpants hanging out in my bathroom ready to shoot me. No, sir. Bruce Willis was trying to help him. He was trying to help him, and now he's naked in his house, all right. skinny. No way, dude. I don't yeah. want skinny, naked Donnie Wahlberg in my bathroom in most no. circumstances. Although Mark Wahlberg at the end of Boogie Nights, you'd love in your bathroom. So I guess it all yeah, depends well. on which Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some strangers are a pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah. That was terrible. A great. That's one of my favorite movies, and I hated that moment. Him with this big fucking fake donkey dick. It's like they should have showed his dick at one point earlier in the movie and just been done with it. Like we get it, right. the giant. The, the giant cock shouldn't have been. It, it shouldn't have been the fucking New York, New York of the movie. You know, <laughs> yeah, the giant dick. All right, so you show it hanging there, soft at one point, and then it's finished. But, you know, you don't have to have it where he takes it out and looks at it. We go, oh, there's the penis. You know, aside like from that, it, it was you a go, masterpiece. You go like this. Oh, it really was that big. Yeah, that's right. Oh my, it really was that big the whole time because you'd almost forgotten about it, right? Because the beginning of the movie is about how big he is and then yeah. you know you start going through the act two troubles and the act three like reuniting with everybody and then you're like oh yeah i forgot he still got that big thing in his pants yeah it was like a nice reminder it was I'll tell you and, I, uh, it's obviously john holmes's life with some differences yeah. uh you know which Inspired they make clear by. yeah when they make clear it was different because they show john Watt holmes as a separate they mention him as a separate entity just so there can yeah. be no confusion, and they, they obviously don't get sued because I think it was were they called the Wonderland or the Winterland murder? Uh, I think Wonderland. The, I think Wonderland. Wonderland. Yeah, the the drug murder John Holmes was involved with. So I mean, you kind of know what the giant dick looked like anyway. So they didn't have to make it the focal point. I mean, we know who Johnny well, Rod was. Not all of us who saw Boogie Nights are familiar with John Holmes's anatomy. I mean, it was a, it was a huge, massive blockbuster of a movie. Not everybody that saw it was like, yeah, i seen John Holmes' dick. I know what it looks like. I don't believe that. I think that any American <laughs> should know. Um, John Holmes, especially at that point, he died in the mid-80s, obviously, of age, or 90s, whatever it was. But 
John Holmes at one point, there's nobody in the country who didn't know who he was. Like, he was the, mm -hmm. the guy. Now there's, a, like, a bunch of guys in porn that have giant dick. Like, it's kind of, I guess, I, I can't think of any names associated with that. Like, oh, my God. But Johnny Watt or John Holmes was the guy. He was the reference. My whole life, John Holmes was the guy. Everybody knew. Yeah. If you said John Holmes, he's like, John Holmes, everybody knew. It wasn't a Civil War hero. It was a guy with a big penis. Um, <laughs> it was an even bigger hero. <laughs> yeah, bigger hero. Yeah, a god, if you will, who was uh, just a skinny guy, um, just a big skinny, hayseed-looking guy with kind of shitty facial hair. You know, everyone yeah. knew it was. Yep. I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you, want to know what I watched over the weekend? Tell me. I had to find it. I had to find. And I did. I couldn't believe that I actually found it on a streaming service. It wasn't. The, it wasn't a Blu-ray. It was a streaming service. So you know the transfer was terrible. The quality was bad because it was. I I, I had to download a streaming service called Tubi. Do you have Tubi? I uh, I I I I don't. There was that or or not Tubi. So I wasn't sure which one I wanted. Gotcha. <laughs> no. So you just yeah yeah you just blew it. Up.